Coming up on the Better Buildings Challenge Swap. Look at all these robots. There's so much uh, compressed air requirement for all yes. of those movements. Just to keep it there. Yeah. That stop sign is getting a ton yeah. of wind. Air vents up there. You got a bunch of air vents in there. L'Oreal. General Motors. Hosted by Maria Vargas from the U.S. Department of Energy. Two energy teams swapped. We are so excited to be here at General Motors. Since we're on the plant floor, GM, we're wearing our safety glasses. Nice we're looking forward to seeing your plant. Julio Garcia, you're the plant manager here. Thank you so much for having us. Maria, we're very excited to have you here. Let's see what the L'Oreal team can find. Making cars and mascara is different, but at the end of the day is manufacturing and we have similar processes. I think we can find some good opportunities for them, but also take some best practices for us. We had our own mini swap within a swap. Danielle wasn't able to join us, but Lauren Page is here, and she was there with us behind the scenes in Arkansas, but we're thrilled you're here today. Oh, thanks, great to be here on behalf of the L'Oreal team. The right. L'Oreal team, today is your day to see what you can find. So, Julio, if it's okay with you, we'd like to go see your plant. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. All right. Energy is uh, one of our nine sustainability goals, energy intensity reduction, and we're on path to do that, which is really exciting. Detroit Hamtramck is about a 4.1 million square foot assembly plant. We assemble four vehicles, the Buick LaCrosse, the Chevrolet Impala, and the Chevrolet Volt, which is an extended range vehicle, as well as the Cadillac CT6, which also can have a super cruise option. Welcome to our body shop. This is the first step in the vehicle manufacturing process. This is where the stamp metal that makes up the vehicle body comes together. We've got 1,100 robots and just over a million square feet of floor space. All right. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. All right. Go, guys. Okay. Definitely is not here. running right now. That could be the first opportunity. Is I wonder if these are powered up right now when they're not in operation. Yes. Because if you just Look at all these robots. There's so much uh, compressed air requirement for all yeah. of those movements. Just to keep it there. Yeah. yeah. I so, wonder if they turn off when the shift is over or over the weekend. Yeah, we can find out. Compressed air is a big use of energy at our factories too, right? Yep, it sure is. Definitely. Yep. Oh, we have movement. So one of the things would be, while it's not in use right here, right. it's still powered. Mm -hmm. So if they had automatic air dump valves, uh, they could power that down and that would lessen their energy requirement. Maybe another opportunity, and we can ask them, it's how do they do technical walks to identify air leak? Hi. Hi. I'm Eric, how are you? I'm good. I'm what you doing over here? I am building the windshield yeah. for the Buick LaCrosse. Oh, very cool. So is that suction that's being used? To that is suction to be suction from the hoist to hold the glass up. So when the shift ends, you know, does the air, does the, does the machine stay on? Does the air stay in or does it totally shut down? It shuts down. It shuts down completely. For energy purposes. As the operator of this line, is there any sort of energy efficiency measures that you're able to take? Yeah, absolutely. With everything that's going on over here, we are now trying to save energy. We're turning off the monitors, we're turning off the lights at every break if it is. Is there stuff that you learn at work that you can take home with you to save energy? Just mainly turning off the lights sure. and the monitors. Yes, That's like the biggest thing. All right guys, so you see the production yeah. line has stopped here. So in about another minute, we're gonna see the lights turn off as well. So in the whole facility they turn off? So the overhead lights you'll still see, it'll be enough for people to walk safely around, but uh, we turn the light line line lights off automatically. Okay. You have any maintenance activity during uh, the shutdown? Sometimes, yes. Yep. Hey, you see are. the lights? Lights go yeah. off. Huh? Yes, yeah, so if you guys want to go take a look, go ahead. All right. Yes, yeah. thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so. And this is a time where you can really hear any air leaks or you can see different Yeah, things. I hear some right now. That great. stop sign is getting a ton yeah. of wind. Let's go. Look at that thing move. So it's moving. It's being pushed by, by something. Okay. Air vents up there. You got a bunch of air vents in there. Yeah. And then you're 
you're seeing, there's different range of temperatures in each of those Oh, wow, look at that. Look at how bright that is compared to the other room. So it looks like this is where the cars come off the line, and I've been noticing that there's a ton of fluorescent lighting around. Maybe they don't need all this lighting on, or if they need it, probably they can find a better way just to turn it on when they need it. Another thing I've seen is that car, they have to open that door to let the cars off the line and outside, and it has been good to see that it, when the car approaches, it opens and then closes pretty quickly yes, afterwards, yes, so they yes. don't let right. that much of the air in and out. Yeah. You're right. I'm wondering if they can have a trap you know, as in our plants, yeah. in order to, to maintain, you know, stability of the air, we like have two air curtain, air curtain yeah. or two double door. Ah, so right, you right. move the car into a, a door yeah. and then close this one, so you, you maintain air there. So I wanted to introduce you to Phil Malaro. He's from Hamtramck Energy and he runs our powerhouse here. So if you give us kind of a high level overview of the powerhouse operations and uh, then we're gonna let them go out and look for some opportunities. Excellent. Uh, back here in the powerhouse, we take all the utilities in, water, electric, steam, and process it for building the cars. So over here we have our energy management system. I can see all the compressed air and what departments are using what. I can see steam, electric, temperature, uh, natural gas and water usage. Yeah, I learned a lot from their energy management system and that brings technical wins that we can bring back to our factory and make some improvements. Let's let them go. All Let's right. go find some opportunities. Thank you, Phil. Thank, Thank you, Phil. Thank you, Phil. All right. Safety glasses and earplugs. You know, take a look at this too. A good practice on their valves is they should have some match marking to show what the normal range is. So this may be controlled by their energy management system, but if it's a manual operation, it's really hard to know what normal is. What I'd recommend is that they have some match marking for all of their manual gauges over here. So you're saying that we can feel and see? Yeah, that's... Oh, I can feel some air coming out. Should we use Why our detector and see? And you can see, yeah, we're up at eight, seven. That's great. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, nothing over there. You can find a lot of leaks with that too. You know, the other thing to notice right here is their lights. So these are all retrofitted LED lights, you can tell. And it looks like they have occupancy sensors because when we walked in, the lights were off and came on. They have a clear understanding of the highest energy consumers in their plan. And that's the way to start. You need to go and really apply your efforts to the biggest opportunity, and they are doing it. One of the things that I notice in both places is how invested employees are from the plant managers all the way down to the people on the line in terms of the different things they can do at their own levels to really uh, make improvements that can better the whole facility. As we toured the assembly line, what was a challenge for me was separating how interesting it was to watch a Chevy Volt being manufactured from then identifying and connecting the dots of all the energy inputs that go into that manufacturing process. What I learned here is that we have similar challenges, but also many of those challenges have similar solutions. None of us are as smart as all of us. And if we could leverage that collective intelligence, I think we could really bring some innovative ideas and help both factories win. It's been really exciting to have the L'Oreal team here at our facility today. They even brought their own gadgets like we did, and they one-upped us with their ultrasonic meter in the powerhouse, uh, which I thought was funny. The fun part is, uh, is having people in the facility and, and finding out new opportunities, things that you don't see that, that they do because it's a fresh set of eyes. We're getting really excited to find out what they found. Through the Better Plants Challenge at the Department of Energy, we're working with national and international leaders when it comes to energy efficiency in the manufacturing space. So it's a lot of fun, there's a lot of sharing, there's a lot of solutions, and there's a lot of innovation. And that's important for all of us. Coming up in the next episode, L'Oreal and General Motors demonstrated why they are energy efficiency leaders in the manufacturing sector. See what they recommend to one another and what best practices they'll take home with them on Episode 3.